Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be just kind of an update video. Uh, first one since the last one I've done, which I think has been a little while now. Uh, but again, just kind of some random things I've picked up over the past few weeks. Um, definitely some good stuff that I brought into my collection, which is kind of nice. A combination between CDs and vinyl. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, found some good sales, still been doing the trade thing, and um, actually found a really good deal on some CDs and in my MoFi collection at a, a local store where I was able to kind of work out some stuff. And so it, uh, yeah, definitely some decent stuff in the hall. So uh, what I'll probably do is maybe just kind of go back and forth, you know, some CDs, some vinyl, and just kind of mix it all in together. But let's start off with just kind of a few, a few of the vinyl here. So we will start off with this really nice reissue, which is R.E.M. Out of Time. I know you guys are very familiar with this album. You know, songs like Shiny Happy People and Losing My Religion and all that kind of, you know, radio song. Just that, I guess, funner, if I can say that, funner <laughs> time of, of R.E.M. You know, definitely a decent album, and of course, Losing My Religion and stuff like that were very big hits for them and did kind of take them to other levels. But, uh, you know, still my favorite REM stuff is still more around, you know, like Orange Crush and uh, The One I Love and stuff like that. Like, like that, that grittier, I don't know if grittier is the right word, but just that type of REM I think is more my flavor. But I, I still, you know, really like this album. And again, just to have a nice reissue of that. And, yeah, I mean, Losing My Religion is one of those songs that kind of brings you in. But even beyond the hits, it's really more of the kind of the B-sides on this album that are the really the better songs, so to speak. I think they get a little bit lost and hidden behind those two big hits that a lot of people either just love or they don't like. So uh, moving right along, Sugarcane Harris. This was kind of a ear-dropping pick up here I was in a, a record store and this was probably gosh I don't know how many weeks ago just browsing around not really looking to buy anything but just spending some time and I heard this playing and I was like this you know kind of cool stuff kind of a, um, a mixture of like a, a Hendrix not guitar playing wise but almost like a vocal but uh, just a little more R&B ish it's kind of hard to describe actually which is one of the reasons why I thought it was kind of neat so you know, I picked it up. It was only like, what, $7 they had on it. And even though it had some ring wear, you know, initially I was like, oh, I'll just wait and see if I can find one that's in, you know, mint condition. And then I got on my phone and just kind of looked online and realized, number one, there's not a lot of mint ones floating out there. And the prices were running a heck of a lot higher than $7. So I thought, well, this is a, you know, I'll pick up this copy and, you know, listen to it and dig it and some point in time in my life hopefully I'll stumble across a mint copy and then I'll, I'll replace it then well actually the vinyl is really good it's just a cover that has a little bit of wear but um, definitely some interesting stuff if you haven't heard of that because I had never heard of heard of them so this is a really interesting new album to discover then you have uh, the grails and this is Doomsdayers Holiday I always want to say Doomsday so I have to actually look at it uh, another new group to me, I, I don't, I, mean, I think I was watching a video on YouTube and someone was talking about this group and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me go actually check out the albums and I started list I listened to like two or three of their albums. I went through them that night and really kind of dug this one, but it's a group out of, I don't quote me because I only like read through some of this like once, but I think it was like, um. I'm sorry, a little thing popped on my screen there. But I think it was like um, uh, Oregon or something like that. But anyway, it's just kind of like a, a post-rock type of thing. You know, kind of an instrumental post-rock type of thing. It's a 45 RPM, so it's not a very long album. It just plays kind of like an EP. But uh, I just thought it was really good stuff. And first album I purchased by them and definitely looking forward to discovering more, more of what they do. Uh, let's go one more on the vinyl before we switch over to CDs. Next here I'll go with Neighborhood Children. And this is one of the albums I have to give thanks to Diana. Uh, as I kind of mentioned in a video recently about her 
uh, I've discovered and I have purchased a lot of new music based off of watching her videos. Uh, a lot on the, the psychedelic and fusion jazz side of things. And this is one of the psych pieces that she showed in one of her videos. And actually, I think like a, maybe even close like a year ago, eight or nine months ago. And she did a really cool needle drop. And I was just kind of waiting to find a nice reissue. And sure enough, one popped up when I had some money in my PayPal for making some sales. So I was able to pick it up. But uh, just, you know, that 60s, 70s psychedelic type of thing. Not heavy on the psych side, but definitely that feel, that flower power psych mixture. And uh, I, just, I just really, really dug it. So it was nice to get a, a copy of that. So definitely have to thank Diana for that one. And let me jump to a few CDs here really quick, too. Uh, let's see, the first one I'll show here. I just picked up another copy of uh, Carl Orff's. This is Carmina Burana. And I'm just showing this really because I have a, a few copies of this before different symphonies and choirs, but and mainly that's because this is arguably one of my top three pieces without question. And it's really cool too because maybe a reason why I picked up another copy, uh, I just recently saw the, um, I think it was the St. Louis Symphony, I don't remember the choir, the, uh, just like just over a week ago, I went and saw them perform this piece by Orff. And I mean, it's just it's just one of those ones that just absolutely blows your mind. I mean, th th this is one that's made to be experienced live, and it it's so weird too because you know when you're sitting there listening and just from literally the first ten seconds that it kicks in, and you know people are just kind of you know sitting like they do with the symphony and they're taking it in and a lot of older people and all that type of things, and like the whole time I was just wanting to stand up and just like devil horn through the whole thing because <laughs> this is one of those pieces that's about as close to like a metal concert as you can get to within the symphony and it, it was freaking awesome man they tore it up but uh definitely my favorite and if you hear the um the very beginning and the very end of this this entire piece most people will recognize it and say oh yeah they've used that a bunch of time in movies and blah 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 but the whole thing from start to finish is just so freaking powerful. So it was awesome getting a chance to see that live. And I have so many different versions of it because I have yet to hear a symphony or a choir screw that up. Like it's such a perfect piece. It's almost, you have to work hard to screw it up. It, it, it's, it's awesome. So uh, check that out if you're not into the symphony overall. Uh, I think that's a really, really good place to start. But uh, moving right along, a few more CDs here. Affinity, self-titled, I, th I think 1970, I believe. But um, I have to give props to, and I think it was the Rock Scout. Uh, I think you showed this in a video, the, a vinyl actually, in a video. I'm almost sure, forgive me if I'm wrong. But um, I remember seeing that and thought, oh, just the way he talked about it. And I was like, I'm going to go check it out. And, of course, I listened to it. And sure enough, it was awesome. So I ordered, ordered a copy of this. But, again, just kind of a good addition to the site collection. Um, Asgard here. Again, just kind of some more psych. A, a band that I wasn't, again, as familiar with. But just kind of, you know, did some listening and discovered a new band I thought was kind of cool. Revel Revelation. I'm sorry. I always get that confused. Revelation. I always want to say revolution. I don't know. Revelation Man. Again, some more good psychedelic stuff there. Uh, next here we have Photos of Ghost. Uh, again, more on the, the kind of the, the psych creative side of rock. I don't even necessarily know what kind of name you'll put to it. There's a number of these where I was kind of sh looking through stuff on some when I get, when I get not bored, when I have some time, I'll go look on different uh, websites people are selling, not websites, usually it's like, usually eBay, maybe sometimes Discogs, but mainly eBay, and I'll just try to find stuff that I have no idea what it is, and I'll see like, oh, that looks interesting, so let me go to YouTube and listen to it, and that's how I discover a lot of new bands that way, outside of even just stuff that's shared in the VC. And so this was kind of one, too, with photos of Ghost. Again, kind of on, on the psychedelic side of things. Walrus, self-titled. 
Uh, now this is, to me is a little less psychedelic and it's more Emerson Lake Palmer type of creativeness, if you will. But uh, it's, it's a really cool CD. I sat down and listened to the whole thing again a couple days ago and just really, really kind of dig it. And then um, last but not here. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Thinking something else. Forgive me. Clear blue sky. That's what happens when you don't edit your videos at all. You just kind of turn the camera on and whatever happens, happens. So when you catch me stumbling my videos, forgive me. <laughs> uh, but same thing here. Just kind of new discovery, kind of on the psychedelic side of things. And so those are all some really cool things and all very new pieces to me, which was nice. Uh, let's go back to vinyl. You guys know I've been going absolutely crazy over Linda for the past six months to a year. And uh, I've been waiting to get my hands on a nice copy of Heart Like a Wheel. And finally found one of those for just like $4, which is nice. Of course, this has You're No Good and a lot of other great stuff. But it really is just kind of Linda doing her Linda thing. And for whatever reason, the last year or so, I've just fallen so in love with what she does. So that's a really good pickup. Mew, and this is a, a, a very nice music on vinyl issue of And the Glass Handed Kites. For the life of me, and I've owned this CD forever, and I've listened to this album a ton, I, I can never get that title down in my mind, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I discovered them a number of years ago, actually. When I used to do a lot of stuff on iTunes, where I don't really buy anything there anymore, but uh, they used to always have like the you know the free song of the week or whatever. And one week they had um, Apocalypsco as the free song of the week, and I remember I listened to it and thought, oh, it's kind of cool, and I downloaded it, and it became a song. I just played a lot, and I just thought it was really really cool. So eventually, I worked my way into buying the entire album uh, or buying the CD, and really kind of liked it. And I was really excited when they issued this on vinyl, but for the longest time I was seeing it in stores and it was like $34.99. And I'm just like, forget that. You know, it's just, it's just way too much. But uh, import CDs is a place that I buy a lot from uh, on eBay and Amazon, but mainly I get most of my stuff from them on eBay. Uh, they kind of play off each other when they raise the prices on eBay they lower them on Amazon when they raise them on Amazon they lower them on eBay so I you know you have to kind of bounce back and forth with them but uh, they had this and also like 20 something percent off so it ended up only being like $18 and I was like that's much more reasonable but uh, yeah music is kind of a hard group to describe they kind of do their own thing It's a, to me it's a mixture between kind of indie and some dance elements and some electronic elements it's you know, just different. But great album and definitely glad to finally have the vinyl in my collection. And my collection finally officially has its copy of Blonde on Blonde back. <laughs> which is nice. This is uh, the new mono reissue. Uh, you know, I had two copies of this. Uh, one with the, uh, what was her name? Is it Claudine or whatever, the girlfriend cover? Uh, but it was kind of rough, and I ended up selling that one. And I had a sealed original pressing, and I, you know, I had it sealed for the longest time. And I thought, okay, well, since I sold my other one, it's time to open this so I can have a nice listing copy. And I opened it up, and it wasn't in the best of shape, which was disappointing. So I got rid of that. So I've been without Blonde on Blonde for, gosh, I don't know how long now. So at the store where I had most of my credit, when I saw that he got this in, I was like, yes, there we go. Very nice mono copy. Sounds absolutely great. And, uh, you know, in the words of Jack Black, don't tell anybody you don't own fucking blonde on blonde. But it's going to be okay. So, all right, so let's go back to CDs now. Uh, great pickup on some Mo Fi CDs. I'll kind of show you what I have here. This is Billy Joel, An Innocent Man. And of course, you guys know this one, kind of that 80s Joel, Uptown Girl, for the longest time. Uh, you know, some of that, a lot of that stuff that a lot of Joel fans either love or hate. But a great MoFi pressing of that. 
Mark Cohen. And this is a self-title. And of course, you know, the song Walking in Memphis was a huge hit for, for him. Really cool song, too. I mean, it got played out like a lot of big hits, but at the same time, it's still my favorite album by him. And I recently purged my regular copy of that because it wasn't in perfect condition, so it was great getting that back in the collection. Hot Cakes by Carly Simon. You know, I do love my Carly. I love, I just love the, the, the 70s singer songwriter type of feel that she brings to, to a lot of the work that she does. So here's more of it self titled there. Yeah, so some, some really good MoFi editions here. And of course, my girl Linda. You know, this is Don't Cry Now. And then we also have Prisoner in Disguise. More great Linda and Hasten Down the Wind, which is definitely one of my favorite albums by her. I, just, I love her sound and feel on this album, you know. And that's the thing about Linda, I think that makes her so awesome is, sure, she has some hits, but a lot of what I love about her is just the feel of her albums and the feel of how she presents songs. So in a lot of cases, I've listened to her stuff so many times I can't really go through and sing a lot of lyrics and that type of thing. It's just when I put Linda on, I want to feel her. And it's just, I don't know, it's just awesome stuff. So to get those three on MoFi pressings is cool. And then I also picked up a couple of Chicago's. You know, you have Transit Authority. And then Chicago, is that three? I always get, I always get my numbers and everything mixed up with them. They can't just label their albums like normal people. Or put tracks listings on them. <laughs> but, uh two other really good pickups there and this has I think 25 or 6 to 4 on it, a couple other really good things too so so on the, those MoFi pressings uh, again I, I got those actually at, at a particular store they, they've had these sitting there for quite some time and just people that go in there just don't buy a lot of MoFi stuff and so one thing I know about this particular owner is that when he has stuff sitting there for a long long time He's willing to move it and say, okay, hey, I'll give you a discount if you buy this. I'll give you this and everything else. And so that's one thing I would always kind of say to people, too, that have record stores you visit regularly and things like that. Hopefully, especially if the owner's not like a real butthole or whatever. Never hesitate to ask, you know, hey, those box sets have been sitting over there for like six months or almost a year. Would you be willing to take 25% off of it or could you cut me a deal on any of those I'd be willing to take this or that if you were to cut you know because unlike some of your big I guess more corporate factory doing everything through the system stores you know owners of those stores can say sure I just, I just want to get it moved off the shelf it's been sitting there for a year and a half type of thing and that's what I did with those, those MoFi's so I pretty much got them for the price of really regular CDs otherwise I couldn't afford to buy that many anyway um, and then worked out some nice trade too, so it all just kind of worked out really well. But just some, just some more, hopefully helpful hints of how to manage being able to get stuff in this expensive type of hobby without spending a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, let me kind of move on. Let's go back to vinyl that we have here. One way, classic 80s R&B album here. Most people that would know them will remember known by the song Cutie Pie. One of just one of the top 80s funk songs right there. But that's a good piece to get back in the collection. Picked up some good Earth, Wind and Fire as well. This is Power Light. Not one of their more popular albums in terms of having any of their major hits or anything, but you know, still during the the very good period of Earth, Wind and Fire and and the biggest thing really for me too is uh, wanting to get all of Earth, Wind & Fire stuff on vinyl, it's easy to find a lot of their stuff. It's really hard to find it in mint condition where you got perfect covers and vinyls that aren't all worn to, to no end. So uh, that to me is always a great find when it comes to Earth, Wind & Fire. So that was a good one. Uh, as well as this one here, which is uh, Touch the World. You know, this is Earth, Wind & Fire going later into the 80s, which wasn't their heyday. I mean, this is still a decent album, but I tend to compare Earth, Wind & Fire to the pinnacle of Earth, Wind & Fire, and this album isn't quite on that level. So, um, 
definitely has some good stuff on it, but it would not be the first Earth, Wind, and Fire album that I would send someone to to check out. And let's see. Peter Schilling. Of course, this is Air in the System. If you're not familiar with this album, you probably actually are more familiar with it than you think, because this has the song uh, Major Tom, you know, ground control, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, this is a kind of a fun 80s album. I think it gets very overlooked, but it's one that should be inside of any really solid 80s collection. You know, it's one of those nice, good albums you can find for $4 somewhere, maybe $5 somewhere. So definitely pick that up if you don't have a copy of it. Uh, this is one I haven't put in my system or clean yet because it's not in the proper case or sleeve. But uh, Linda Rodstadt, hand sewn. Just some more good Linda that I picked up. And again, no big, gigantic, huge hits on this album. This is just more of, of Linda doing her her great thing. I mean, just, a, just another really, really great feeling good Linda album. Mr. 80s Funk himself, Rick James, Cold Blooded, another classic album. And Rick James is much like I was just saying about Earth, Wind, and Fire. You'll find his stuff all over the place. You'll find it very cheap. But the find it mint just does not happen that often. So anytime I can, I find a great piece where I can start getting closer to fulfilling my, my Rick James collection. That's awesome. So it was great picking this up. I think I only paid like two ninety nine for it. I just like I said, found it in perfect condition. But songs like Cold Blooded and of course uh, Ebony Eyes, the ballad that he did with Smokey Robinson, definitely one of his bigger hits in the eighties. And all things Rick are good, Mr. Funk. And let's see, the last two vinyl, then it's like two or three more CDs I'll show, and that, that's it. Cameo. Feel me. I've talked about Cameo a bunch of times, too, because, again, one of my favorite 80s R&B slash funk bands. And the thing I always say about Cameo, which pretty much every time I talk about them, I say this. Cameo is the most, and was the most, rock and roll R&B band you know, next to maybe Parliament Funkad Funkadelic as far as just a band who did their own thing. You know, they didn't follow any rules. You couldn't pigeonhole them into doing any type of music. They were silly when they wanted to be silly. They rocked it when they wanted to rock it. They funked it when they wanted to funk it. And they, they just did whatever they thought felt good. And in, the, in light of that, they created some awesome music. Everything from extremely mainstream stuff like most of you guys have heard like the song word up and commercials and everything else everyone knows that mainstream stuff like candy but then extremely funky stuff like keep it hot um, and then even going just like silly wacky stuff like alligator woman and um, you know she's strange and just all kinds of stuff I mean just just an awesome awesome band and the last vinyl piece here, this is more of a replacement, but I happen to find a brand new sealed copy of Anita Baker, giving you the best that I got. Just some, you know, again, some, some classic late 80s, going into early 90s R&B. And then the last, just couple CDs here, found this great copy of Kiss Killers just hiding this little stack of CDs. Got that for dirt cheap perfect condition which was really cool and then I picked up two free CDs so you got heartbreaker here and then um, tons of sobs and you know free is a I mean they were a big band they were a well-known band but there's just something about them that is I just always get the sense of being like it's pure like in your face classic rock that like I don't, they they just nail that sound and that feel. And these two albums, especially Heartbreaker, just two perfect examples of that. Um, yeah, so to, to be a classic rock fan and not just really, like you said, hard hitting, grooviest classic rock. I mean, this is just right up that alley. So if you're not familiar with this album, make sure you definitely check that out. Which again, free Heartbreakers, and then uh, tons of sobs. And the very last thing I wanted to show was this little box set. 
because I was very, very surprised that this had actually been made. But as you can see, it's the SOS band. Uh, again, one of my, actually, hold it upside down. Uh, one of my favorite R&B bands from the 80s right there with Cameo. This to me is, is kind of like the true nature of what R&B was supposed to be back in the 80s. Not the early 60s, 70s, Aretha Franklin, Wilson Pickett. And, I mean, the, 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 that's a whole, you know, Ray Charles, Marvin Gaye. That's a whole different different level of R&B in, in that time frame. But when, when it went into the 80s and things became more um, like the new wave that rock became... There was also a very similar thing with R&B and like SOS band was one of those bands that really did the right thing inside of that space. And, um, you know, so anyway, not to get too deep off in that, but this is the set. I mean, it is a little disappointing in the sense that it's a the very simple, you know, cardboard, no inserts, basic CDs and whatever. But still, just the fact that they put together a set for this band to me and it's such a cheap price. It's just fantastic. So all kind of all their albums in here, all the studio albums. And if you're not familiar with the band, I'm recommending checking out songs like uh, "Tell Me If You Still Care," uh, "Just Be Good to Me," "Weekend Girl," uh, stuff like that will give you a very good idea about just the the smoothness that that is the SOS band. So uh, again, just for all you '80s R&B fans that probably love this group. Just want to let you know that, yeah, that set is out there. Not very complex, but it's also extremely freaking cheap, which is nice. So, there you go, VC. That went a little long, but uh, that stuff that I've picked up over the past week or two, in case you're curious what's playing in the background, I didn't mention this Exodus, uh, Blood In, Blood Out. So, um, yeah, as always, let me know what you think, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.